Henry's good deeds. There are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. The engines know their names and their songs. One day, the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. Sir Topham had arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird, so a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your passenger cars at all times, and remember not to frighten the warbler. Henry was worried for the warbler. Do you think the Sodor warbler will be scared of engines? No, Henry, not if you're really useful. And I need you to be really useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver a nesting pole to Bluff's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um, what's a nesting pole? It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds build their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Henry? Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Warbler will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Henry. Henry was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Henry clickety-clacked along the track. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Henry shoved slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Henry. I'm letting Farmer McCall cross with his sheep. Henry could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas, you helped me. That's a good deed. Well done. You're welcome, Farmer McCall. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Henry puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed, and they will say, well done, Henry. This made Henry feel very happy. I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Henry huffed happily on. Soon, Henry saw Farmer Trotter's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm, those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Henry saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to roll in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So, Henry stopped. And the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy, and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. Henry was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. I didn't help at all. Suddenly, an idea flew into Henry's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Henry pumped his pistons. His wheels whirred. He puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help, Farmer Trotter. But it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Henry's steam and the whir of his wheels. They scattered and clattered into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples. But now they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bust my buffers. My idea wasn't a good deed at all. Just then, Thomas puffed up on the down line. Annie and Clarabelle were full of visitors to see the Sodor Warbler. Cinders and ashes. How am I going to puff through? The Sodor Warbler has been spotted in the Fenland Fields. I'm in a hurry. 
I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fenland Fields. We'll be there in good time. Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Henry. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Henry's passenger car. Henry felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed. And I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Henry puffed and huffed his hardest all the way to the Fenland Fields. Here we are. Watch out for the warbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the carriage doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the soda warbler away. Henry felt very happy. At last, I've been helpful. I've done a good deed. Henry tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colorful bird flapped and flew from a tree high into the sky and away. It was the Sodor Warbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. Fizzling fireboxes. The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Henry steamed sadly away. I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors. But I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds. And I haven't delivered the nesting pole. Henry felt terrible. Henry huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, well done, Henry, to me. Henry waited at a junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole. Sir Topham Hat will be cross with me. Oh dear, oh dear. Suddenly, a colorful bird flew from a tree. Henry was too sad to smile at the bird. The bird landed on Henry's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So, Henry and the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. Henry puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodo Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased. They were amazed. They smiled and pointed and took out their cameras. Henry was surprised. Oh! The visitors seem very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, well done, Henry. Well done, Henry. You have brought the Sodor Warbler to us. Hooray for Henry! Henry blinked and blushed. The bird I carried on my buffer was the Sodor Warbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Henry. Henry was so proud, his firebox fizzed and his boiler bubbled. And this time, I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon, the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Warbler looked snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes its new home. Welcome home, Mr. Warbler. <laughs> and well done, Henry. <sighs> The Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect a special special, but he didn't know what it was. Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes, how exciting. I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas puffed happily along. 
Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promised to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's engineer poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Thomas has made a mistake! Stop, Thomas! The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop. And he didn't listen. Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flat my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering coaches. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff, my boiler, how exciting. I only have straw in my freight cars. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Uh-oh, trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas! The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt was there. So were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workman carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The Lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish, and straw. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, this is a terrible mess. Gordon and James <laughs> laughed, and Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue. So Sir Topham had told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time, and now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise the Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the Lion of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? 
This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But now the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. Workmen polished the statue until it shined and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The Lion of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mayor will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Napford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor, and everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mayor will be at Napford, and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shined and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest! <laughs> Everyone cheered. And Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. Splish, splash, splosh. It had been raining and pouring on the island of Sodor. The engines were splattered and sploshed with mud. Thomas liked the rain. It splish splashed on his boiler and pitter pattered on his paintwork. Thomas and Rosie had biffed and bashed all day at the shunting yards. Now it was time to go. Come on, Rosie. I'll race you to Tidmouth Sheds. The two friends puffed along the tracks, straight through a very big puddle. Thomas and Rosie were splashed from footplate to fender in muddy rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Then, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Thomas reversed slowly. Then he pumped his pistons. Here I come, Rosie. Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> That's a good game. Here I come, Thomas. Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> <laughs> Muddy water splattered everywhere. Then Sir Topham had arrived. He had some important news. Alicia Botty is to sing at a concert in the town hall. The concert will be followed by a grand tea. That's exciting. What fun! Thomas, you must go straight to the washdown. Then you are to collect Miss Botty and myself from Dryaw Station. We will be waiting for you. Yes, sir. Rosie, you must collect Annie and Clarabelle and take them to Dryaw for Thomas. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. See you later, Rosie. And Thomas and Rosie chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the junction to the washdown. He saw a very big puddle on the other track. Charlie was waiting right by it. He was very muddy. Splashing Rosie was such good fun. I'm sure Charlie would like my game, too. 
and I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. So, Thomas didn't take the track to the washdown. He took the track through the middle of the very big puddle. Here I come, Charlie! Splish, splash, splush! <laughs> Bust my buffers! That's a good game! Thomas huffed happily on. Hooray! This is fun! Now, Thomas wanted to find more puddles. He couldn't wait to play his game with other engines. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff left to the washdown. Then, he saw a very big puddle on the right track. Emily was waiting. Emily's muddy already. I'm sure she'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. Here I come, Emily! Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over Emily. And all over Emily's flower cars. Fizzling fire boxes! I have to take this flour to the bakery to make the cakes for Alicia Body's tea! Now Thomas has ruined it. Thomas didn't know he had splashed Emily's flower cars. This is fun! Splish, splash, splosh! I'll soon need a wash! <laughs> and Thomas chuffed on, chuckling. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff to the washdown. Then, he saw a very big puddle right beside James. James is muddy already. I'm sure he'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for just one more puddle before the washdown. Here I come, James! Splish! Splash! Splush! <laughs> and Thomas steamed away laughing. Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over James. And all over the ripe strawberries on his flatbed. Blistering boilers! These strawberries were for Alicia Botti's cakes! Now they're ruined! Thomas didn't know he had splashed James's strawberries. This is fun! Splish, splash, splosh! I'll soon need a wash! And Thomas puffed on happily. Thomas chuffed up to the next junction. Now it was getting late. I know there'll be a very big puddle along the track by the river. I'm sure I have time for one last puddle before the washdown. So Thomas took the left track that went along the river. Ahead of him was a very big puddle. My! This is the biggest puddle ever! Here I come! Splish! Splash! Splash! Then there was trouble. Muddy water flew high into the air and splooshed down all over Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hat. Thomas! Thomas screeched to a stop and reversed slowly. He saw that he had splish, splash, sploshed Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hat. Cinders and ashes! Look what you've done to Miss Botti. She's soaked. Also, Thomas, I hear from the dairy manager that you ruined the flour and strawberries for Miss Botti's grand tea. This is a disaster. Thomas felt terrible. He tried to puff forward, but he couldn't. Oh, no. The big puddle had put out his firebox. This game isn't fun anymore. It's all gone wrong. Then, Thomas heard Rosie's whistle. Rosie, please help me. I've splish splash sploshed into trouble. Oh, dear, Thomas. Of course I will. Don't worry. Rosie heaved and huffed Thomas onto dry tracks. With my dry coal, Thomas, your boiler will soon be bubbling. Thank you, Rosie. Now, I can't go to collect Sir Topham Hat and Alicia Body. Would you take my special for me? Of course I will. I'll go right away. Later, Thomas was once more steaming happily. He pulled up at a junction. There was a very big puddle on the right track. 
Look at that big puddle. It's perfect for splish splash sploshing. No, I'm not going to splish splash splosh anymore. I must make sure that Alicia Body's grand tea is on time. And Thomas puffed along the left track to the bakery and away from the big puddle. Thomas arrived just as James and Emily had delivered fresh strawberries and flour to the bakery. Your silly game means we'll be late for the concert. No, you won't. I'll wait here for the cakes. Then I'll deliver them. You can go to the washdown. Then you'll both be clean for the concert. Thank you, Thomas. Now I'll be shiny and best and gleam more than the rest. Thomas puffed in with the fresh strawberry cakes for the grand tea. You're just in time, Thomas. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I caused confusion and delay. Rosie puffed up to Thomas. I found another puddle. It's perfect for our game. We can play again. No, thank you, Rosie. I think I've done enough splish splash sploshing for one day. Hero helps out. The engines on the island of Sodor like to be busy. They heave and haul. They huff and puff. And most of all, they like to please Sir Topham Hatt. One morning, Hero chuffed into Knapford Station. There was hustle and bustle, noise and steam. It was another busy day at Knapford. Then Sir Topham Hatt hurried onto the platform without his hat. Hero gasped. <gasps> sir, good morning, sir. I hope the day finds you well, sir. The day finds me with much too much to do, Hero. That's how the day finds me. I can see, sir. What are you staring at, Hero? Nothing, sir. Just your hat, sir. Excuse me. Edward puffed in. Hello, Hero. You look worried. Not at all. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. In all my long years, I've never seen that before. <clears throat> Hero was worried for Sir Topham Hat. Sir, can I help you, sir? It's a very busy day, Hero. I have to visit the Thin Controller. I must talk with him about the railways. Hero knew this was important. I understand, sir. I must be away from Knapford. Of course, sir. Now, Edward was worried. Sir? Not now, Edward. Edward was still worried. I have to pick up visitors from Brendam Docks. I don't know where to take them. Hero didn't know where the visitors should go either, but he didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hatt. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Take them to the hills, Edward. They will enjoy the hills. So, Edward puffed away to Brendam Docks and the hills. Hero felt happy. He was master of the railway, as he liked to be. Hero puffed up to the water tower. Thomas was there. He was taking on water. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. Where are you going, Thomas? To Knapford. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt where to take these crates of benches and tables. Hero still didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt is busy now, Thomas. He will tell you where to go later. You have time to visit your friend, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hero was happy. He was helping Sir Topham Hatt.
hero steamed up to a junction. Percy was there. He had a flatbed full of quacking ducks. Hello, Percy. How are you? Percy was worried. Hello, hero. These ducks are very noisy. They want to go swimming. I have to find Sir Topham Hat. He will tell me where I must take them for a swim. Hero still didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat is very busy, Percy. Perhaps you could puff to the Finland. The ducks will be happy there. Thank you, Hero. Hero was happy. Helping Sir Topham Hat was the best job he had ever had. Hero huffed happily to a crossing. Sir Topham Hat was there. Hero, while I was with the Finn controller, I heard worrying news. Farmer McCall is waiting for his ducks. There are no tables or benches for the concert at tea time. And Edward is late for a concert at the town hall. <gasps> Hero gasped. Sir Topham Hat was cross. Sir Topham Hat was cross with him. And it was all his fault. Hero felt worse than ever. He had been master of the railway. And now he was master of the muddle. I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I knew you were very busy. I wanted to help, so I told the engines what to do. I didn't want to bother you, sir. <gasps> Sir Topham Hat gasped. You didn't want to bother me. I am controller of the railway. Nothing is more important to me than my engines being really useful. Hero gulped. I know that now, sir. I'm not master of the railway. I'm master of the muddle. I can put this right. Please give me time. And Hero wished quickly away. Hero found Edward in the hills. Hello, Hero. My visitors are very happy. Good, Edward. But now, you must take the visitors to Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hutt will give you your orders. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hutt, Hero. I was wrong, Edward. Sir Topham Hutt didn't want that at all. And Hero steamed swiftly away. Hero whooshed up to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. I'm having a wonderful time with the piglets. Good, Thomas, my friend. But now, you must puff as fast as you can to Knapford. Sir Topham Hat is waiting with orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hat, Hero. I was wrong, Thomas. Sir Topham Hat didn't want that at all. Bye, Hero. Hero clickety-clacked onto the Fenland track. Percy was there. The ducks were swimming happily. Hello, Percy. Hello, Hero. The ducks are very happy. I'm pleased to hear that, Percy. But now, you must take the ducks to Knapford. Sir Topham Hat has orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hat. I was wrong, Percy. Sir Topham Hat didn't want that at all. But how can I get the ducks back into their crates? I will help you, Percy. Hero blew his whistle. It sounded like a duck quacking. The ducks flapped and flew into their crates. Thank you, Hero. Later, Sir Topham Hat had given his orders to the engines. Now, you all know what you have to do. Chuff away and be really useful. Hero puffed forward. And what shall I do, sir? You, Hero, will do what you have always done. You will be helpful, Hero. Helping me. And nothing could have made Hero happier. Creaky Cranky.
It was the spring holiday on Sodor. There was to be a party for the children at the Duke and Duchess's new summer house. All the engines were very excited and very busy. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. James and Henry were passing through. Good morning, James. Good morning, Henry. Where are you puffing to? I'm taking these straw bales to the summer house for the children to climb on. I'm taking wood to make a stage for the children's show and barrels of lemonade to drink. How wonderful. I'll see you later at the summer house. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? It's the Duke and Duchess's party day. Party smarty. I don't go to parties. I'm stuck here loading and unloading all day. I haven't had a moment to rest my hook. That load is for me. It's eggs for the children to paint. Hurry up, Cranky. You're creaky, Cranky. What's the matter? Are the eggs too heavy a load for you? <laughs> Cranky didn't like Thomas's joke. He didn't like being called creaky. No, they're not too heavy for me. They're light as fluff. <laughs> You're not strong enough to pull anything heavier than fluff, Tiny Thomas. That's why Henry and James have the heavy loads. Now Thomas didn't like Cranky's joke. Fizzling fireboxes, I'm as strong as any other engine. You're not as strong as me. I can lift much heavier loads than you could ever pull. Thomas really didn't like that. We'll see, Cranky. I have lots of time to deliver the eggs. First, I have to prove Cranky wrong. James has a heavy load. I'll go and find James. So Thomas steams sternly out of the docks. Thomas found James at the junction by the washdown. Hello, James. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of wooden barrels for you? You can stay here at the washdown. Then you'll be perfectly polished for the party. James thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So James was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of wood, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off for the docks. Thomas chuffed back into the docks. You again. What are you doing with that wood? This flatbed is very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift it. Cranky looked at the flatbed of wood and barrels. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the wood. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed into the air. Thomas's boiler buzzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still tiny, Thomas. That made Thomas very cross. I will prove Cranky wrong and still have time to deliver the eggs. I'm sure Henry had an even heavier load. I'll go and find Henry. So Thomas steams stormily away. Thomas found Henry waiting by the coal hopper for his special coal. Hello, Henry. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of straw bales for you? Then you can wait here for your special coal. Henry thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So Henry was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of straw bales, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was very heavy. Huffing and puffing, Thomas set off once more for the docks. Soon, Thomas puffed back into the docks. You again. Now, what are you doing with those straw bales? This flatbed is very, very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift this. Cranky looked at the flatbed of straw bales. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the straw. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still tiny, Thomas. 
That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly, Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Bubbling boilers! Creaky Cranky is lifting me! Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and juddered. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no. Cranky's crane arm had broken. And it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, what are you doing up there? I'm sorry, sir. I was... You are causing confusion and delay. The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales, or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken. And you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then Sir Topham Hatt looked at Cranky. And you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame to be as silly as a steamy. Soon, a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder, just as Spencer arrived. Dear, oh dear, Thomas, what a mess. Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer. But he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful. And he had to be really useful. Spencer, I need your help. You're very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me. Will you take the wood, the straw bales, and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm. Very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. Thomas wished like the wind all the way to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Cranky creaked, and now he's cracked. He needs new parts. You've come to the right place, my friend. Parts are plenty here. We'll have Cranky up and lifting in no time. Soon, Thomas's flatbed was loaded with new parts for Cranky. Thank you, Victor. Of course, my friend. Give Cranky my best! And Thomas puffed happily away. Thomas puffed into the docks with his heavy flatbed. Cranky was still looking crumpled. Here you are, Cranky. We'll have you fixed in no time. Thank you, Thomas. That's a heavy flatbed. You know, you're not tiny. And you're not creaky. Cranky laughed. <laughs> and that made Thomas <laughs> laugh, too. <laughs> Steamy Sodor. All the engines on Sodor like to be really useful. They huff and they puff to do their best for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. And sometimes that means doing a job they have never done before. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt had a new job for Thomas. Victor has to go to the transfer yards. He has to see one of the little engines. He will be away all day. You must look after the steamworks, Thomas. Victor will tell you all you need to know. Make sure you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Thomas was excited. The Sodor Steamworks is one of my favorite places on the island. Today, I'm going to be in charge. That's a very important job, Thomas. Good luck. Thank you, Percy. And Thomas puffed proudly away to the steamworks and his new job. Victor was waiting for Thomas at the steamworks. Thomas was very excited. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. Hello, my friend. This is a big day for you. The steamworks will be very busy. Not too busy for me, Victor. 
I like being busy. <laughs> That's good, my friend. Now, when an engine comes in, you have to listen carefully to their problem. If you need help, ask Kevin. That's right, Thomas. When you're in a fix, look no further. Just ask Kevin. It'll save you bother. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Are you listening, Thomas? Yes, Victor. But Thomas was too excited to listen. He wanted to get on with his very important job. Don't worry, Victor. I know just what to do. Hurry, Victor. You'll be late for the little engines. Very well, my friend. Good luck. And Victor steamed away. Thomas was now in charge. Soon, Spencer steamed sulkily into the steamworks. His shiny silver paintwork was scratched and scuffed. Spencer was surprised to see Thomas. Uh, where's Victor? He's away today. I'm in charge. Spencer was worried. Oh my, Spencer. You are in a mess. I'll check you over from wheels to whistle. Put Spencer up on the hoist, please, Kevin. Kevin was worried. Are you sure, boss? I mean, Thomas? I don't think Spencer needs to go on the hoist. I mean, he needs a repaint, boss. But Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. He was too excited. He was in charge of the steamworks. Put Spencer up on the hoist, Kevin. Over here, Spencer. <laughs> please, if you don't mind. Please, <laughs> thank you. So, Spencer huffed huffily to the hoist. Then, Henry chuffed in. Henry wasn't well. He spluttered and stuttered. He wheezed and sneezed. Henry was surprised to see Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Henry sighed. Then, he wheezed. Then, he sneezed. Footplates and fenders. I know just what's wrong with you, Henry. You have been given the wrong coal. Henry gasped. No, Thomas. It's not my... <laughs> but Thomas wasn't listening. Don't worry, Henry. We'll have you puffing proudly in no time. Kevin, bring over some of Henry's special coal, please. But... but what about Spencer, boss? But Thomas wasn't listening. Quick as you can, Kevin. So Kevin trundled to the coal. Spencer sat sniffly by the hoist. Henry <laughs> spluttered and stuttered. And Thomas felt pleased and proud. I like being in charge of the steamworks. Then, James steamed snootily in. Straw and twigs blocked his funnel. Why are you here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Bubbling boilers, you are in a mess. What happened to you? I can't puff properly. <laughs> I know just what you need. Kevin! Yes, boss? I mean, Thomas? James needs a new funnel. No, I don't. But Thomas wasn't listening to James. But what about Henry's coal and Spencer on the hoist? Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. Find the spare funnel, please. Kevin was now very confused. To find the funnel, he had to put down Henry's coal. But first, he had to raise Spencer on the hoist. It was all too much for Kevin. Oh, dear, boss. Uh, Thomas. Don't worry, Kevin. I'm in charge. Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist. And with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. <gasps> Heaving hooks! Sorry, Spencer. Then Kevin dropped Henry's coal right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crashing coals. Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Mind my shiny red paintwork. James was so upset he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown all over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now he was covered from buffer to buffer in twigs, soot, and straw. Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. <gasps> Sizzling sodor! 
What has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor, and then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes. This is all my fault. No, boss. I mean, Thomas. I'm sure it's my fault. I'm sorry, boss. I did try to say, boss. No, Kevin. It's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor. I didn't listen to you. And I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited and too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time, Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me <laughs> wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Oh. James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Any time, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> laughed and laughed and laughed. Playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodo are very happy. They are all pleased to work on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to. Like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting. I have news too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favorite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he is the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botti at the docks. Miss Botti looked very grand. I'm pleased to be traveling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's freight cars of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Want to come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks, and then I'll take Miss Body to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. 
So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Botti smiled sweetly from her passenger car. Charlie pulled alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. Yippee! <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler, and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. Their funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Bati could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. Who is your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun. And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti, it is an honor to have you visit our steamworks. Kevin. Sorry, boss. And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botti sang to the steamworks. <laughs> Then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botti straight to the town hall, but he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botti to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there. We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun. Thomas wanted to be fun, so he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Ooh. Alicia Botti oh. juddered and jumped. <laughs> and the couplings jiggered and jiggled looser and looser. At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> And this is even more fun. We must go, Miss Body. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye. If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Knapford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. Let's race again. Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking Sir Topham Hatt to the town hall. Thomas gasped. I'm late. I must whoosh like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons, and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late! I mustn't be late! Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had unhooked. Thomas raced on to the town hall, alone. Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir! Sir Topham Hatt looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabelle? And where is Miss Botty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. Sir Topham had boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabelle, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabelle and Miss Body. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabelle first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. 
He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Body singing. Hooray! Thomas found Miss Body by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Body singing. Miss Body must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Botti cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabel. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. At last, Thomas, you've made Miss Botti very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to, and such fun. That made Thomas smile, and so did his fun friend Charlie. Double trouble. All the engines were very excited. They chuffed cheerfully and chattered as they clattered along the tracks. Today was Sir Topham Hatt's birthday, and there was to be the grandest birthday party on Sodor. Thomas had a very special special. He was to pick up Sir Topham Hatt and Lady Hatt for the party. As Thomas approached Maithwaite Station, he gasped. Ahead, he could see Sir Topham Hatt already on the platform. Cinders and ashes, I must be late. Thomas pulled into the station. He was worried. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was early. Sir Topham Hatt turned around. Thomas gasped. <gasps> Sir Topham Hatt had a mustache. Thomas was so surprised he nearly popped a piston. Thomas, my good friend, you're looking perfectly polished today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled so loudly his top hat wobbled. Thomas was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never chuckled so loudly that his top hat wobbled, and Sir Topham Hatt never called Thomas his good friend. I know, Thomas. Let's go to the Whispering Woods. It's one of my favorite spots. We have plenty of time before the party. All aboard! Now Thomas was even more puzzled. He wanted to ask about Sir Topham Hatt's new mustache and why he was acting so strangely. But Thomas didn't want to look silly. So he decided not to ask. Thomas pulled away from Maithway Station and chuffed towards the Whispering Woods. Thomas puffed up to the Whispering Woods. Edward was there. Edward had brought children to visit the woods. Then he was to take them to the party. Hello, Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Thomas was worried. But before he could explain, Sir Topham Hatt climbed down. Marvelous! What fun! Please, sir. Uh, we can't stay long. The children mustn't be late for the party. Oh, party smarty, Thomas. We have plenty of time. You worry too much. And Sir Topham Hatt strode off. Hello, children. Who'd like a game of hide-and-seek? Did Sir Topham Hatt say a game of hide-and-seek? Yes, he did. And Thomas's wheels wobbled with worry. Sir Topham Hatt played hide-and-seek for a long time. He was very happy. So were the children. Edward was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never plays hide-and-seek. I know. And what's that on his face? A mustache. It just appeared. Today, Sir Topham Hatt doesn't seem like Sir Topham Hatt at all. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt came back. Thomas wanted to ask him if he was feeling all right. But he didn't want to look silly. Thomas knew that silly engines weren't really useful engines, so he didn't ask any questions. We must hurry now, sir. We'll be late. And so will the children. But Sir Topham Hatt wasn't worried. Don't hurry the children, Edward. Let them play. Edward was so surprised his boiler bubbled. Then Sir Topham Hatt jumped aboard Annie and waved to all the children. Thomas's wheels clickety-clacked. He puffed and he huffed along the track. He knew they were late for the party. 
Thomas stopped at the junction. Suddenly, Sir Topham had jumped out of Annie and climbed up to the signal box. I won't be a moment, Thomas. Thomas was amazed. So was the signalman. Sir Topham Hatt never came into his signal box. Hello there. May I have a turn? Thomas looked up. He saw Sir Topham Hatt pull a lever. <coughs> then Thomas heard Gordon's whistle. Cinders and ashes. Here comes Gordon. Gordon had all the important visitors aboard the express. He was taking them to the party. With a clang and a clatter, the points changed. Gordon and the express were no longer on the express track. They were now on a branch line heading away from the party. Thomas heard Sir Topham Hatt whoop for joy. Hooray! Fizzling fireboxes. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt why he's being so strange. But when Sir Topham Hatt came down from the signal box, Thomas didn't say anything. He still didn't want to look silly. What fun! All aboard, Thomas! Thomas raced towards Maithway. Lady Hat would be waiting. They were very late. Thomas was worried. First, Sir Topham Hat had a mustache. Next, he wanted to play hide-and-seek with the children. Then he sent Gordon off the express line and away from the party. Hmm. Sir Topham Hat is acting very strangely indeed. Thomas puffed into Maithwaite. The station master was cross. Thomas, you're late. Sir Topham and Lady Hat had to go to the party and Bertie the bus. But Bertie hasn't arrived at the party. Neither have the children or the very important visitors. Thomas was puzzled. If Sir Topham Hat is on Bertie, then who is on board Annie? Just then, Thomas's passengers stepped down. Thomas knew he had to ask a question he hadn't asked before, even if he looked silly. Excuse me, Sir Topham. You don't quite seem yourself today. Is everything all right? Thomas's passenger beamed brightly. Yes, Thomas, but I'm not Sir Topham Hat. I'm Sir Loam Hat, Sir Topham's brother. Thomas was amazed. That explained everything. But he wished now that he had asked his question earlier. Now there was no time to waste if he wanted to be a really useful engine. Bertie must have broken down. We must find him right away. Sir Topham Hat's brother was very excited. Hooray! Another game of hide and seek! Now Thomas was stern. No, Sir Loam Hat. I have to work hard and quickly. Otherwise, your brother's party will be spoiled. Sir Loam boarded Annie, and Thomas puffed away. Thomas found Bertie the bus. Smoke billowed from his engine. Bertie looked very unhappy. So did Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Thomas, where have you been? Just then, Sir Topham Hatt's brother stepped down from Annie. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Oh, no, Loam. Have you been up to your old tricks again? Absolutely right, Topham. I've been having a wonderful time with Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt didn't think this was funny at all. Loam, you have caused confusion and delay. We must hurry. Thomas delivered Sir Topham Hatt, his brother, and Lady Hatt to the party, just in time. The party looked grand. But Thomas couldn't stay. He had work to do. First, Thomas chuffed to the Whispering Woods. Edward was very happy to see Thomas. Go straight to the party with the children, Edward. Sir Topham Hatt is waiting. It was his brother, Sir Loam, who was playing hide and seek. Next, Thomas found Gordon. Gordon was huffing and puffing as slowly as a snail down a rickety branch line. Ugh, the indignity. Hurry, Gordon, to the next express line. Race like a rocket to the party. That made Gordon very happy. At last, Thomas chuffed back to the party. Edward and Gordon were already there. What a wonderful party! And it was. Everyone was laughing. Then Thomas and his friends heard something very extraordinary. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled even louder than his brother. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Thomas and the Pigs. 
There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms. But his favorite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. Thomas was excited. I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He will be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they'd like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. Thank you, James. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown Hello, chestnuts. Thomas. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. <laughs> I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. Bye. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McCall's farm. Farmer McCall was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples, and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McCall looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples, and shiny brown chestnuts. 
Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples, and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotter's. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw, and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McCall's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he wished. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McCall. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. Thank you, Farmer McCall. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly nighttime. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. <gasps> Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed. And he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers! Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Aw, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. Thomas was so happy. His axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. Percy's Parcel. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining in a bright blue sky. And all the engines were very excited. There was to be a special party. It was Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had a special for Thomas. Thomas, you are to collect passengers for the party from Brendam Docks. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. Percy hoped that Sir Topham Hatt had a special for him, but he didn't. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure you'll have a special later. But Percy still felt sad. Mavis rolled by and stopped. She could see Percy was unhappy. What's wrong, Percy? I don't have a special. Everybody else does. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure Sir Topham Hatt will come back with a special special just for you. And when he does, be sure to tell me all about it. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt did come back. Percy was surprised. 
Perse, you have the most important special of all. You must collect my mother's special birthday parcel from Brendam Docks. Then you must deliver it to the birthday party at Knapford Station. Percy beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Percy was excited. Mavis was right. Percy puffed into Brendam Docks. He gasped. The parcel was the most special parcel he had ever seen. Percy was so proud, his firebox fizzed. I must show Mavis straight away. She will be very proud of me. Thomas was at Brendam. He was pleased for his friend. Percy, you have the most important special of all. I know. I'm going to show Mavis my special special straight away. But don't you have to go to Knapford Station? Percy didn't want to listen to Thomas. I have plenty of time to puff to Knapford. First, I will show Mavis my special special. So, Percy set off for the quarry as quickly as he could puff. Percy steamed into the quarry. He looked for Mavis. Mavis was busy. Rocky was loading heavy crates onto freight cars and Mavis was shunting them. It was hard work. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Percy. Look at my special special. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop now. I'm too busy. Don't worry, Mavis. I'll wait. Look out, Percy! But it was too late. Oh, no! Rocky dropped his heavy load of slate. Everyone was lost in a thick black cloud of slate dust. At last, the dust cleared. Mavis, Rocky, and Percy were covered in thick gray dust, and so was Percy's special special. Percy was upset. Bubbling boilers! Look at the birthday parcel! What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. At last, an idea flew into his funnel. I'll go to the washdown. My special special will be cleaned there as good as new. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to Rocky. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I still have plenty of time. So, Percy steamed quickly away. Percy huffed and puffed to the washdown. James was already there having a polish. My, my, Percy, whatever happened to you? Percy felt very silly. I'd like a very good wash, please. The workmen got straight to work. Water and soapy bubbles sprayed everywhere. Soon, Percy was gleaming green again. But his special special looked terrible. Bubbling boilers! The birthday parcel is wetter than wet! What am I going to do? Percy thought as quickly as he could. At last, another idea flew into his funnel. I'll take my special special to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will help me. His hot air blowers will dry the birthday parcel. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to James. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I'm sure I still have plenty of time. And Percy chuffed quickly away. Percy raced like the wind to the steamworks. Percy looked for Victor at the steamworks. He couldn't find him anywhere. But he did find a workman. I'd like to be dried as quickly as you can, please. The workman was happy to help. Hot air whooshed and whirred all over Percy and all over his special special. Soon, the workman had finished. Percy felt very pleased, until he saw the birthday parcel. Wobbling wheels! It's all crinkled and crumpled. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could, but this time, no ideas flew into his funnel at all. So Percy steamed sadly away. Percy clickety-clacked slowly along the track. Now, he didn't want to show Mavis his special special. He had spoiled Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday parcel, and he couldn't go to the party at Nabford now. 
Percy didn't want anyone to see him, so he chuffed into a siding to hide. He felt terrible. Then he heard Mavis and Edward chuff to the junction. Hello, Mavis. You look happy. I am. I've just picked up these brand new crates. Suddenly, Percy stopped feeling sad, and he started to listen very carefully. Brand new crates? Victor had just delivered them to the steamworks. I've never pulled brand new crates before. Goodbye, Edward. A brand new crate is just what I need. Percy pumped his pistons and puffed away to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Hello, my friend. How can I help you? I've just seen Mavis with brand new crates. May I have one, please? Well, what for? To put my birthday parcel in. Well, of course you can, Percy. That made Percy very happy. Thank you, Victor. Soon, a new bright red crate was sitting on Percy's flatbed. This will be the grandest parcel Sir Topham Hatt's mother has ever been given. I must hurry now. Everyone will be waiting. Thank you, Victor. And Percy puffed proudly out of the steamworks. Sir Topham Hatt and his mother were waiting at Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Then Percy puffed in. The brand new bright red birthday parcel looked wonderful. Everyone cheered. Happy birthday, ma'am. Here's your very special birthday present. Sir Topham Hatt's mother beamed. And even Sir Topham Hatt smiled. As the workmen opened the crate, everyone wanted to see what the present was. Sir Topham Hatt's mother was most excited of all. Then everyone gasped. It was a beautiful portrait of Sir Topham Hatt's mother. Oh, my, Bertram, what a wonderful surprise. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's the most special special I've ever seen, Percy. Percy smiled from foot plate to fender. He was sure he was the happiest engine of Thomas and the Runaway Kite. It was a bright blue morning on the island of Sodor. It was the day of the Sodor Kite Festival. Soon the sky would be full of kites of all shapes and colors. The engines were very excited about the kite festival. Thomas was the most excited of all, because Thomas liked kites best of all. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He had a very special special. He was to collect the winner's cup for the kite festival. Thomas gasped when he saw the cup. Oh my, that's the most beautiful cup I've ever seen. Thomas. You must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Lady Hat will give it to the winner at tea time. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. I will chuff straight there. Thomas puffed proudly. He wanted everyone to see that he was pulling the winner's cup. Thomas pulled up to a junction, high in the sky. Above the treetops, he saw a kite. Fizzling fireboxes. What a wonderful kite. I hope I will see it again. Thomas huffed and chuffed to the top of Gordon's Hill. Then he gasped. There's that wonderful kite again. The kite belonged to Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. <laughs> they wanted to win the cup at the kite festival. Charlie puffed up. Look at that kite swoop through the air! Look, there's Thomas! Suddenly, a gust of wind pulled at the kite. The kite flew up, 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 and away. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren watched. They were very sad. Thomas wanted to help them. Don't be sad. I'll chase after your kite and bring it back to you. This made the children very happy. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can catch up with your kite. I'll help you, Thomas. No, thank you, Charlie. I'm much faster than you. I can chase this kite all by myself. So, Thomas didn't go straight to Knapford with the winner's cup. 
He chuffed off, chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's runaway kite. The wind blew the kite far down the tracks. Thomas whooshed and whooshed. His boiler bubbled. His coal crackled. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then the wind blew the kite out of sight. Where has the kite gone? Hello, Thomas. You're huffing hard. Hello, Edward. I'm chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. How exciting. Can I help? No, thank you, Edward. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase their kite all by myself. At last, Thomas caught up with the kite. He was excited. Then, the wind blew the kite another way. Cinders and ashes, come back, Mr. Kite, please! Thomas chased and raced. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then the wind blew the kite up over the bridge. Emily was on the bridge. She saw the kite. She was surprised. Hello, Thomas. Are you chasing that kite? Yes, Emily. It is blown away from Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. I've promised I'll catch it. Can I help? No, thank you, Emily. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase it all by myself. And Thomas whooshed on under the bridge. Thomas clattered and clacked. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. What's wrong, Thomas? Your cheeks are as red as James's boiler. I'm chasing that kite. Let me help. I can chase it with you. No, thank you. I can chase this kite all by myself. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. So Percy chuffed off, and Thomas puffed on. At last, the wind dropped. The kite landed in front of Thomas near a junction. Thomas was pleased. Bubbling boilers, I've caught up with you now, Mr. Kite. Thomas whooshed across the junction towards the kite. Then there was trouble. Thomas started juddering and jittering. The flame in Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzled out. Thomas had burned all his coal chasing the runaway kite. Oh my! Oh no! I've run out of coal. Then. The wind blew again. The kite flew high in the sky and was gone. I can't puff anymore. I can't chase the kite. I'm not the fastest engine on Sodor. I've broken my promise to the children, and I haven't delivered the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Thomas felt terrible. It's all my fault. Suddenly, Thomas heard an engine chuffing around the corner. It was Charlie. What's wrong, Thomas? I ran out of coal trying to chase the kite. I thought you were the fastest engine on Sodor. I'm not. I was silly to think I could catch the kite on my own. Will you help me, Charlie? Of course I will, Thomas. Charlie gave Thomas some of his coal. Soon, Thomas's firebox was burning brightly. Thank you, Charlie. I'm late. I must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Can you look for the kite, please? With all my huff and chuff, Thomas. So Thomas puffed to Knapford with the winner's cup. On his way to Knapford, Thomas stopped at a junction. Percy, Emily, and Edward were waiting. You look sad, Thomas. I didn't catch Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. Will you all help me? Of course we will, Thomas. Right away, with no delay. Thomas's friends were happy to help him. 
and Thomas was happy to be helped. Thomas arrived at Matford Station with the Winner's Cup. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren raced over. Hi, Thomas. They hoped Thomas had found their kite. I haven't found your kite, but all my friends are looking for it now. Come with me. So the children climbed cheerfully on board. Thomas puffed to a junction. Suddenly, the kite flew in front of Thomas. There's the kite. Emily, Percy, Edward, and Charlie chuffed to the junction. The kite danced between them. Then it caught its tail on the signal. Hooray! We've caught the kite! The engines tooted, the children cheered. <laughs> With the help of my friends, we caught the kite. And later that day, at the kite festival, Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite danced best of all, as the wind blew it high up in the sky. And Thomas smiled and 